Voice and Vision includes collections from six sources. These include the American Antiquarian Society, the British Library, the National Archives at Kew in the United Kingdom, New York University, Swarthmore College, and University of California, Santa Barbara. The materials contained within those collections include periodicals, monographs, and manuscripts, but there is a strong emphasis on periodicals because it was brought to Gail's attention that this is a content format that is missing from many other digital archives. The time coverage spans from 1820 to 1993, and topically, the primary sources cover a variety of subject areas, from exceptional women and women's organisations who change society on the one hand, over to primary sources that give insight into women's day-to-day -day lives on the other. Although there are several areas within women's history that I would have loved to have explored for my own personal interest, it was my task as an editor to ascertain which primary sources researchers who are currently working in the field of women's history and gender studies need on a day-to-day -day basis. We ascertain this by first of all talking to scholars and researchers both working and teaching in this area. We also looked at a number of course syllabuses and textbooks used at both undergraduate and postgraduate level. And we also did a great deal of data analysis on postgraduate theses that have been produced in recent years. It was from these investigations that we decided that it was important that the collections that we were sourcing spoke to three key requirements. First of all, it was important that the material was authored or penned by women. Many of the academic advisors that we spoke to really stressed that it was important to actually see material that was produced by women, not for women. Most of history has been told from the male perspective, meaning that the female experience is often either overlooked or completely ignored. Academics wanted to see more materials authored by women, but also materials in a variety of formats talking on a variety of subjects. The reason for this was that it would provide researchers with an opportunity to explore different ideas of the female voice. And it was this concept of the female voice that actually inspired the title of the digital archive to be Women's Voice and Vision. The second key requirement when considering which collections to include was to look at materials that covered women outside of North America. So although Women's Voice and Vision does contain a number of collections that look at American life, we also have a number of collections that look at European women. We've also been conscientious to include primary sources that speak to women in minority groups, both religious and racial. For instance, from the University of California, Santa Barbara, we have three excellent collections which look at Mexican-American women in the 1970s and their involvement in the Chicano civil rights movement. And then the final requirement that we really needed to take into consideration was that it was important that the topical coverage of the collections looked at things other than women's suffrage. Now, the history of the women's liberation movement is unquestionably very important and highly deserving of study, but it is only one area of women's history. We therefore wanted to make sure that the topical coverage of the resource was not only varied, but it covered subject areas that were prevalent in current women's history and gender studies research. So these topics include women in political groups, women in radical groups, health and hygiene, reproductive rights, labour, education, and women's representation in popular culture. 